Beyond the Bell, Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. And right now we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romain Bostic, Taylor Rich, and Ali Bass again for Caroline Hyde. We're counting you down to the closing bell and here to help take us beyond the bell. Carol Masser, Tim Stenevich. We welcome our audiences across Bloomberg Television, Radio, and YouTube awaiting Netflix earnings. But right now, uh, Carol, equities right now at the highs of the day, 2% pretty much across the board. Yeah, as you pointed out, you know, we saw a rally yesterday that ran out of steam, but that's not the case today. We're really keeping that momentum. It does, once again, seem like investors are focusing on maybe the the growth opportunities for this economy, especially as earnings are flowing out. And we've increasingly seen a correlation between tech stocks and Bitcoin today, no exception. Uh, Bitcoin higher today, off its session highs, but still higher, Taylor, by 1.9%. Yeah, you really see it. And I know for our radio audience, we've been really uh, uh, pounding this drum, of course, as we've been approaching the closing bell. But it is the real yield, of course, mm -hmm. that we are watching here on the 10-year yield that is flirting with positive territory for the first time since March 2020. We were at negative 0. 0.0025. Just so close. You can taste it, Taylor. I know. <laughs> it's a really seminal moment for markets, guys. And you have to wonder what it means for asset prices moving forward. And to Romaine's point that he was making to us earlier, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? We focused so much here over the last uh, few weeks on the macro conditions, but right now we are going to refocus uh, pretty heavily here on some of the uh, fundamentals, corporate fundamentals here, earnings, that is the growth story with some of the growthiest stocks. Netflix, of course, uh, being uh, the premier one here. We saw what happened last quarter when they reported here and the guidance they gave really disappointed. Yeah, right. And put so much pressure on the stock. So it's going to be interesting to see what they say, whether or not they are maintaining yeah. uh, their number of subscribers here. Romain. And Netflix is going to finish the day about three percent higher, though we should point out it's about the fourth worst performer in the S&P 500 year to date. As far as what's happening today, the S&P 500 is going to finish higher by about 1.6 percent, roughly 70 points or so. The Nasdaq composite up about 2 percent on the day or roughly 280 plus points. The Dow Jones Industrial Average higher by about 500 points or 1.5 percent. And real quickly, let's flip it up and look at the Russell 2000. The Russell higher by about 2 percent on the day. We should point out transports were also higher. The Dow Transportation Average up 2.8 percent on the day. Netflix earnings crossing the wire, Taylor. Yeah, let's take a look at this. They are looking at first quarter streaming paid net change. Wow, negative 200,000. That wow. was for estimates of being up two and a half million. That is a big decline here. Netflix now also issuing forward guidance, looking at second quarter streaming paid net change. Also, negative 2 million versus estimates of a positive 2.4 million. So I know we really want to go through these numbers, but you are looking at after that price hike, we know that they had lost maybe a million or two customers in Russia. Wow. Some big declines here now. Romaine, I know you'll correct me, maybe one of the first times we've ever seen a decline here on a quarterly net change basis. But again, the big headline number, first quarter yeah. streaming paid net change, a drop of 200,000 yeah. last quarter versus estimates of a two and a half million gain and that forward guidance again second quarter also looking at a drop here of two million versus estimates and, of gain of 2.4 and Carol and Tim I mean they're talking here about this idea of trying to re-accelerate viewership and revenue growth they are making a point here that they are focusing a little bit more on outside the U.S. for some of that growth but we've heard this before and there are really are a lot of questions mm -hmm. as to whether we've kind of reached peak Netflix I mean well, everybody is subscribed to this and the question is how many at, more subscribers are out there Tim? look at the third sentence of the letter to shareholders our relatively high household penetration when including the large number of households sharing accounts combined with competition is creating revenue growth headwinds. Mm. For years, Reed Hastings and company were totally okay with people sharing Netflix accounts. We've seen them cracking down or attempting to crack down on that recently, but calling that out in the third sentence in their letter to shareholders. Well, and what's going to be interesting is the spin potentially on the call with analysts in the investment community because Netflix already a headline. Much of the growth will come from outside the U.S. in the longer term. So will they say, okay, Hey guys, we've got it. We've saturated the U.S. market, Chanali. Our focus in terms of growth will be international. We've heard this before, and we'll see whether or not that appeases investors. Stock down 17% shares of Netflix. Yeah, it's actually dropping even further now, 19%. Carol, you're really seeing that the picture was obscured from COVID, and then to your point, the Russia losses here, about 700,000. Hey, sorry, I just want to jump in here uh, real quickly here. An interesting comment in this uh, uh, release here about them basically declassifying the board. Remember, they had that super majority structure here here, they actually say they are going to remove supermajority voting provisions in our charter and enable shareholders to call special meetings. We're also going to change mm. the voting standard for our directors to simple majority and uncontested elections. This is the big change, guys. 
Let's do all of this more with Geetha Ranganathan, U.S. media analyst here for Bloomberg Intelligence. And Geetha, huge headline numbers. What stands out to you? I don't think when you think, just, just when you think it couldn't get any worse, it just does, right? And, uh, of course, we were kind of expecting them to be in line with guidance. Of course, that is a big disappointment that they are losing subscribers now and again, the 2Q guidance. So this, this is really bad news for the stock, and I think it's, again, going to lead to a whole recalibration, a whole resetting of expectations for the Netflix story. Hey, Gita, Carol here, and I was looking at some of the reading in uh, on the preview of the earnings, and Bloomberg Intelligence said that download data suggested subscriber gains of 4 million, so even above the 2.5 million that the street was expecting. Is that why we're also seeing such a big drop in the share price? Because even out there uh, in the universe that they were expecting a, a more aggressive number from Netflix. Yes, I think so. So I think coming into the quarter, we were obviously looking at download data. Guidance was, as you know, Carol, very, very weak. Mm -hmm. But we were looking at download data, which did hold up pretty decently versus, you know, last period, uh, you know, 1Q of 2021. And so that kind of gave us some confidence. But then there were a lot of these uh, headwinds that were kind of clouding the outlook. So the, the geopolitical turmoil, the Russia, no one really knew how many subscribers were there. But it looks like it was about two, two and a half million probably, uh, which kind of impacted that subscriber number. And then, of course, you have the price increase, and that was always, you know, going to be a big wild card as well. I'm curious. They talk about here the idea of trying to boost uh, viewership overseas. That, that could be a growth story for them. But when you look at the numbers for Latin America, you look at the numbers uh, for the Asia Pacific region and some of those emerging markets here, I just don't see that growth just yet. What is going to be the catalyst, if anything, that would actually get them to some meaningful growth in those markets? I think now it's really going to come down, Romain, to price. So we've seen Netflix has been able to grow to about 200, you know, 220 million subscribers worldwide. It's, it, you know, but I think all the low-hanging fruit at this point has been captured. Mm. We really are not seeing any catalyst. So I think at this point, they do talk about pass password sharing, and they talk about 30% of U.S. households sharing accounts. So potentially kind of uh, hinting that they're they're probably going to crack down in that in the developed markets. But I think in the in in the emerging countries, especially Asia Pac in LATAM, I think what they're going to really yeah. have to do is introduce that ad tier okay. to lower prices and to attract a, a wider customer base. Well, that's where I was going to go next here. Why have they been so resistant to embrace that? Something people, some investors at least, have been calling for now for quite some time. Yeah, they've always kind of wanted to keep this, you know, a pure subscription story, stay away from advertising, stay away from data privacy. Uh, but I think now, uh, you know, just kind of seeing this, the whole subscriber story, just a tremendous, a dramatic slowdown here, as well as Disney Plus kind mm, of finally mm. conceding that they, they mm -hmm. you know, the, the mighty Disney is also introducing uh, an ad tier to get to that target of 250 million subscribers by fiscal 2024. That tells us, you know, that tells us something. Advertising is is inevitable you're going to have to do it not just e to acquire new subscribers maybe even to retain your existing subscribers especially as you have all these inflationary pressures building hey Gita, you mentioned disney plus disney shares lower as our roku shares in after hours now as a result of these it's fair to say netflix totally invented a category years ago when it came to on-demand streaming as a subscription the company says though over the last three years as traditional entertainment companies realize streaming is the future many new streaming services have also launched the company calling this out as a third reason for the headwinds for the current quarter. I'm wondering how much of this is about competition, about those traditional broadcast companies, about those traditional entertainment companies finally figuring out streaming. Oh, absolutely. They're, they're, it has a lot to do with competition. We're seeing them not. I mean, obviously, Netflix has a huge, a huge advantage. They've been the first to the game. Uh, you know, they do have that first mover advantage. But you have everybody now making a bigger and bigger push. And we've seen now the streaming wars almost evolve into these spending wars. If you look at Disney, they're spending $33 billion on content this year. You look at Warner Brothers Discovery, the new media powerhouse. They're spending about $20 billion of content. So all of these companies chasing streaming subscribers in a big, big way. Of course, Netflix is itself is spending about $18 billion. But really, you know, to all of that low-hanging fruit, especially for Netflix, seems to have been captured. And so to get that incremental subscriber, they're going to have to spend a lot of money. And competition has been a, a very, very big factor, especially as you see some of the tech giants kind of get in in a much bigger way. And, uh, you know, Amazon Prime obviously being the prime example there with their MGM uh, buy, as well as, you know, kind of getting into sports in a much more aggressive way. Gita, the thing is that 
Netflix is losing customers in three out of four of its regions, including 600,000 in the U.S. and Canada. Forget emerging markets. In the U.S. and Canada, we're also losing customers here for Netflix. So what is that really attributed to? Is it the prices? Is it the inflation that we're seeing elsewhere? Where are we seeing issues with the core customer base? I think with the U.S. and Canada, and this is what most investors were really fearing was the price increase. So we did have a substantial price increase from about $14 to $15.5 that went into effect uh, in the first quarter. And, and everybody was kind of fearing that, you know, typically people haven't been that price sensitive and churn has been fairly low. Netflix has been able to pass on those price increases fairly successfully. But I think this time around, the environment is different. The situation is different. Uh, you, you know, you have this whole in inflation situation going on and, and I think people have just kind of had enough and especially when you have so many of the other streaming alternatives out there that are so much more cheaper uh, you know then it kind of really begs the question about whether you really need all those services and mm -hmm. pricier and pricier services. Really appreciate your time and analysis. <laughs> analysis. Geetha Ranganathan, U.S. Media Analyst of course for Bloomberg, Bloomberg Intelligence going to be sticking with us uh, because Carol I believe that it is time for us to part ways. Well just real quickly here with yeah. Netflix shares down 20 percent. IBM shares up about 3 percent here in the post market after reporting earnings. Their Q1 numbers did beat on some of the main metrics. Uh, EPS was basically in line but that software revenue uh, came in above estimates of 5.8 billion uh, basically round up here. Their 1Q revenue in total was $14.2 billion. The street was looking on average for $13.8 billion. Uh, and as far as the guidance here, the company saying that year, full year revenue growth will be at the high end of the mid single digit range. Of course, IBM, a very complex company with that transition to the cloud. We'll dive a little bit deeper into those numbers when we get a little bit, little bit more time. Tale of two earnings reports. Yeah. IBM up about 3%, Netflix down about 20%, and it's dragging down shares of Disney and Roku as well. So that will certainly continue to play out into the Wednesday trade. All right, guys, we got to run our earnings season certainly off and running that's going to do it for our cross-platform coverage on radio tv and youtube we will see you again same time same place tomorrow